Welcome to our review on analog and digital communication. So first thing we need to understand then is that there are two ways to transmit data signals, either using analog or using digital. So if we compare these two signals first of all, when we're talking about a digital signal, we're referring to something that has only two values. It's either on or off. It also might be referred to as being one or zero. Okay, the one meaning on, zero meaning off. The other type are the analog signals, and these continuously change the values. So the diagrams at the bottom there show you the pictures that you'd see with an analog and a digital signal. So digital, nice and simple, it's just these blocks because it's either on or it's off. And then the analog signal, because it can take any value within a given range, then it's that much more wavy pattern. When we're thinking about the relative advantages of these different signals, if we consider the advantages of using digital, because one thing you've probably noticed over the past few years is lots of things are going digital. So one thing is, and the big advantage, that interference or noise can be easily removed from a digital signal, which gives us excellent sound or picture quality. So you've obviously got your original digital signal, which you can see on the left of the diagram there, and then the signal received by an aerial could have some of this interference or noise present within it. So that would obviously affect the quality of the image you received. But because it's a digital signal and it's very clear if it's either on or off, anything else shouldn't be there, then that means that we can clean it up nice and easily. So what we find there is that we get a much better picture quality as a result of digital. The other advantage we've got through digital is that we can carry out this process called multiplexing, which is literally just sending many different digital signals at the same time. So because we can send lots of digital signals at the same time, then we can send more information at once. One of those recent developments we've had is DAB radio, so it's digital radio. Now, there are some advantages of having a digital radio. First one is that we get more stations available as a result of this multiplexing. Second thing is that we get less chance of interference, so we get a clearer signal. There are, however, some clear disadvantages to DAB radio as well. First one is that not all areas of the UK are covered. So if you've got it in your car, you've probably noticed as you're driving along somewhere, you've got a signal and then all of a sudden the signal goes. And that's because you've just hit an area where it's not covered by the DAB signal. The other problem we've got is that sometimes the sound quality isn't as good as the FM radio, just because we've compressed the sound in order to transmit it. So if you think about the different quality MP3s that you can download, it's like getting one of the lower quality ones there where we've compressed the sound so much, we lose some of the quality. One other thing we can use to communicate then is infrared. So we can actually use our infrared to communicate over short distances. And this is what we're doing in things like a remote control. So when you actually push a button on your actual TV remote, what it does is it generates a series of pulses in infrared that then emitted from the very front of your remote control. Your TV then has a sensor which detects this and depending on what button you pushed determines what code is sent and your TV interprets that and will change the channel or turn the volume up. We can also use infrared in burglar alarms and in those automatic security lights as well. 